darklings. So I've been doing a lot of watercolor paintings lately and I've been getting a lot of questions about watercolor. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, which I recommend because it's more interesting than YouTube to me, um, then you can see that I post art with a great amount of frequency, which is the whole reason I started YouTube. But so this is my watercolor box. This is my box filled with watercolors. So the main brands that I use are Grumbacher, Academy, Artist Watercolor. Um, you can get those at Michael's. This is more Grumbacher. And then I believe Winsor Newton, they're in here somewhere. Uh, I also have some like Higgins black ink. This stuff will move if you add water to it. So I mostly just use it as a black when I can't get the Payne's gray to work. Um, but I also have some sepia tone ink in here and some other sepia tone ink in here that's thinner and a bunch of calligraphy inks because I used to be a lot better at calligraphy than I am now. And some of these are silver or white. So this is my inks and watercolors are up on the top row. On the bottom row, I have my brushes, which is an eight round, a four round and a 10 over zero round. Um, and then these are the metallic watercolors that I've been using kind of recently. I'm not as proficient with them, but um, they do add just a little bit more depth to some of the paintings sometimes. I use Speedball Super Black ink, which I have to keep in a plastic bag because it's very fond of exploding in my purse. Um, and then in here I have my pen nibs and pens, which is not terribly exciting. And then this is Winsor Newton Masking Fluid, which I swear by I love masking fluid because it's a good way of preserving white space um, so that you can progress through painting a lot faster. So when I'm at home, I use this palette and all of these little wells stay relatively clean because I don't really mix. I just mix on the paper. I do the same thing with acrylics. I don't pre-mix, I mix on the, on the paper. It's just old habit. But this is pretty much all the colors all laid out and I just do it in glazes, try and keep it clean. But as I usually paint at work, instead I use a water brush, an acrylic based brush pen, and a water based brush pen for ink. And these are both black. Um, so that way I can do this at work, which is where I'm usually painting, which means that my watercolors are in here. So this is an old Altoid tin I repurposed because I hate throwing away Altoid tins because they look like they can be useful for other things. So that's where I keep my watercolors. And then this fine line resist pen is what I use for doing the masking fluid stuff on the go. So if you have seen my art and you ever see these little itty bitty white areas, that's because of this stuff. It's like magic, it's witchcraft. I love it, it's my favorite thing. I wouldn't be able to paint without it, it feels like. So that's what I have as far as the actual materials go. I have been thrifting frames. So in the state of Utah, there is something called Deseret Industries, which is owned by Mormons, but it's kind of like Goodwill. And the DI is a great place for me to find dollar frames, like crazy and hoard them like a dragon. And so it really helps for when I'm doing these little tiny paintings to be able to take up a biggish size piece of illustration board, use an X-Acto and cut it up smaller so it can fit with certain frames. I can kind of pre-make them to go with frames, including oddly shaped frames that I got from an antique mall in downtown Salt Lake, or just more normal sized frames, which apparently this one has Jesus in it, um, that he will be removed. So that's how I can kind of pre-prep frames. I'll also do it on just regular watercolor paper but I'll also do it on illustration board, it just depends. So I do have a big pile of paintings that I've done recently, all of which are for sale on my Etsy. Please buy them, I swear they're not expensive. So we got Don, this is a barn owl hacking up a hand holding a snowdrops. I don't know, that one was really just a crazy idea. This is the hollow girl. Some of these are titled and some of them are not. Um, this is Double Trouble. Uh, it was supposed to be tabletop standing, but apparently someone ripped that piece of cardboard off, so now it can hang on the wall instead, which, improv. So it's supposed to have one of these. Uh, this is From the Night. I don't know where I come up with the ideas for things. I didn't give this one a title, but it's a chameleon with moth wings and parasitic fungus or something. I don't know. Um, this one's based off of Saikara, kind of. 
Um, I come up with the ideas from sort of everything. I use Tumblr as a big source of image gathering and then hoard images like crazy. This one's called Amethyst Eyes. I hoard tons of images. According to my computer, I have something like 35,000 reference images saved, which isn't healthy. I didn't, oh, this one's called Devour. This one's just ink, there's no watercolor. Uh, this one's the storytelling tree. Unfortunately, the glass fell out of it because this frame is annoying. This one's older. This one's just called Spider Eyes, Roses. I can't remember. Um, this one's from the summer that no one's bought. I really like the frame. It's so heavy, though. Um, this one's also, pure, this is a silver plated frame. This one's called uh, Bacchus. And then this is a fuzzy frame that I found. It's all furry and sits on the tabletop. So I did two drawings to go in there. This one's from the antique mall that I've found some other crazy things at. This one's actually a comic. I decided to make a two part comic and one of those weird, very dated, like from the eighties standing frames. Um, if you want to be able to see that one properly, it is on my Instagram because there's no sense in me sitting here and doing that. Uh, this is another one that's slightly older because I like vampires and everybody looks better covered in blood. Um, this one is called Serpent, which I really like the idea. I don't know where the idea came from, but that was a fun one. Um, this one's my favorite in here, which is uh, Peacock, which I mostly just was having fun geeking out on little details while watching Norwegian horror films. So I've seen so many movies, which I, I think is evidenced. This is called a Sea Knight Knife something. I don't know. That was a, This frame is ungodly heavy, but I thought it was so cool. That one's based a little bit off of Naomi Campbell. And then this one's just pen and ink. This isn't even watercolor. I just thought it was fun because it's graphic novel inspired. Uh, so I am a big dork and I really like doing lots and lots of drawings while watching movies on my iPad at work when I don't have tattoo customers. So if you want to experiment with watercolors, um, there are tons of tutorials online. I do not do tutorials. I hope people will stop asking me to do tutorials because I don't. But um, there's tons of available information. I know that there was a book that I read probably 30 or 40 times when I was 14 and first starting watercolor, which was watercolor fairies and how to's and stuff. And so it just shows you tons and tons of techniques about how to paint watercolor fairies because in 2007, everybody wanted to paint watercolor fairies. I guess I never left 2007, but uh, just experiment and don't be afraid to ruin some things and to sort of play around with it. Just be careful to not work too much wet on wet because it can just make it a muddy mess. Um, I usually try and work wet on dry, but I'm really impatient, so sometimes that doesn't happen. Anyway, um, that is what I have for showing off materials and showing what I've done. If you are able to support me, please click on my Etsy, which is listed in the description as always. Otherwise, at least buy a zine, they're only a dollar. I'm trying to turn at least some of these as a part of a new couple of zines, but we will see. Anyway, I hope that you like seeing what I have done lately. Till next time, Darklings.